So even though people feel how hot surfaces are in the sun, how intense the sun feels, they convince themselves it's all normal because the agencies don't tell them anything else is wrong. They assume they would be told if there was something wrong. This is a very naive notion. This is a, a manzanita bush, a juvenile, and you see how the ends, the tips of the new growth look like they've been hit with a torch. These most hardy species of brush, a manzanita plant, they're dying throughout the forest. Whole mature organisms 10 feet high are flashing out dead. This is an extremely hardy brush species. It looks like it's been hit with a torch. These are new juvenile leaves. You can see they already look like they've been hit with a torch as well. Several that are shaded right here. The small little batch of leaves maybe is slightly shaded. It's not curling up, looking fried yet. We've had 40 plus inches of rain here in the last two plus months has nothing to do with drought. This is an extremely hardy drought resistant species. This is excessive UV. Also we have fungal issues happening with these plants now because the bioavailable metals kill soil microbes. That allows fungal proliferation of the 200 species of plant and animal a day that we are losing to extinction. 70 to 80 percent are fungally related. Same as the human body. If you kill off the beneficial organisms, the beneficial microbes, fungus infection ensues. When people take antibiotics, they typically get fungal infections. Nature's no different. This is a slightly larger specimen of manzanita. If you look at the whole tree, it certainly does not look healthy because it's not healthy. And you see it's not flowering. This plant is horrifically affected from the excessive UV, from the bioavailable metals in the rain, which kill soil microbes, has an effect on the root systems. This is a main source of food for forest animals. These flowers produce berries. Turkeys, bear, and, and many other species rely on this as a food source. They have no food. When this is the most a plant can produce, a couple small pods of flowers, there's nothing for the animals to eat. This is happening throughout the forest. Steep, steep decline, even with normally very hardy specimens like this manzanita. And here's more species of manzanita. This is a silverleaf manzanita. You see smaller plants in front with the very discolored leaves. That's fungal infection. As the bioavailable metals are killing soil microbes, changing soil pHs, changing forest soil compositions, it has a horrific domino effect. Although Forest Service and USDA foresters will not admit to this implosion that's happening in the forest, it's absolutely happening. And you see even in the background, even whole specimens, mature specimens of manzanita that flash out stone dead black from fungal infection. So this mature species, stone dead, the fungal ailment that is affecting so many of the silver leaf manzanita, this tree has succumbed to it. But if you look a little bit past, here's a tree that has not yet completely succumbed to this, still putting out some flowers, but much less crown on this tree. All the trees have much less crown than they had only a few years ago. They can't take the excessive UV, so their foliage starts to decrease, dead branches start to appear, they can't leaf as well, they can't flower as well. They're simply trying to survive the exposure to the excessive UV. So some plants are stronger than others, some, some individual organisms stronger than others, but we're seeing a huge percentage flash out stone dead throughout the forest. It's another larger specimen of black oak. It's mid-February, it's already leafing out. It's two months ahead of when it should be leafing out. The leaves last fall stayed on the trees and in late November, December, when a certain series of rains comes, we've seen this the last four years, all the leaves on the deciduous trees wad up dead, but still hang on the tree. As you see lower down on this tree, that's what we have. It appears to us as if some sort of defoliant is included in the aerosol spray mix. And we know fruit farmers have been using this type of method to cause their orchards to go dormant for years. This is because the temperatures have been rising so progressively. Five years ago, we saw the deciduous trees still fully leafed with green leaves going clear into January. Now we see fully foliated native oak trees with stone dead leaves that hang on the trees all winter long. And as you see with this tree, the new leaves are coming out two months early while dead leaves are still hanging on the tree and have been all winter. You can see the topography in the background. It's quite steep here and we're northeast of Redding, California. So even in these drought years, we still have 
what would be considered by most standards a fairly high degree of rainfall because of orographic enhancement. We're a couple thousand feet higher than Redding. And the way the storms usually move up the central valley, it wrings the moisture out when it hits this higher topography. It's called orographic enhancement. So for these manzanita trees to be dying, it's, the, the drought certainly is an effect, but not the key effect because manzanita can survive in conditions with a third the rainfall we're getting even now here in the drought stricken years. We've had about 40 inches in this location so far this year. But now we're seeing, because the storms are not the normal low pressure counterclockwise circulation that we've historically seen, and we know the aerosolization is going on because the lab tests prove this, the, metal, the, the precipitation is full of the same toxic metals listed in geoengineering patents. So we're not seeing the same orographic effect that we would normally have historically seen where in this location we get about two and a quarter times the rain Redding gets. If Redding, California gets 33 inches, we get about 70 here. We don't see that discrepancy anymore. We get maybe 40 or 50 percent more. So the aerosolization has an effect on the rain. But with the plants, the organisms, the trees, we know in these locations here, I've been here with USDA soil scientists testing soil pHs. We have the USDA background studies, so we have a solid baseline. And we know the soil pHs here in this region have changed 10 to 12 times toward alkaline in the last 10 years. Those are astounding changes. The effect on the organisms is clear. Again, not only do we have the pH changes, but we have the microorganisms that are being killed from the bioavailable metals. We know the effect of the bioavailable metals on the root systems. With many organisms, it causes them to stop nutrient uptake, so they start to die a slow death. We know we have excessive UV now. Again, the forest ecosystem is imploding. The lack of wildlife here is very evident. It's virtually silent here in a forest that was thriving only 10 years ago. So again, the geoengineering assault from every direction is completely thwarting the web of life here in the boreal forests of Northern California. This is a, a native black oak. This is a mixed hardwood and conifer forest that we're in right now. This tree, the, the Cambrian layer, has been completely fried off the tree from the base of the trunk to the tips. All the branches that are exposed to the south-southwest side, the Cambrian layer is virtually fried off the tree. This was one of the most canopied areas in this particular canyon, and now it's an open canopy. The sun comes right through. The trees are dropping their, their foliage, and they're just flashing out dead. You see the tree in the foreground? That's a, a large dug fir just flashed out dead. Again, the ones around it are losing foliage. That fir is in the process of dying. It's thinning out, dropping needles. Branches are being let go. As you look at the fir on the right as well, you see his branches are gnarling. You see some dead branches sticking out. Foliage is very thin. Go to the far right tree, you see another dead branch sticking out of him. He's in the process of dying. All these trees are dying in one of the most shaded, sheltered, wet areas in the canyons north of Redding and east of Lake Shasta. Firs are dying all over Shasta County, Siskiyou County. Uh, the agencies are not talking about it. They're not admitting to it. Their job is to hide it. The typical cobweb-like aerosol, wispy clouds. People mistake this for some sort of natural cloud. They're absolutely not. So we live under a toxic canopy. Everything that they spray in the atmosphere comes down. These trees that we see the tops of here are all dying. And these trees have their feet in the water. We're near the stream right now. So you see the tops are all dying from the excessive UV. And we know some of the trees that get the most water are dying the fastest because they're also getting the most toxins, where the, the toxic materials accumulate in the drainage areas. It's extremely alarming to see the, the, the decline at the rate we're seeing it here in the forest. We are now being told that the climate engineers want to start using the terms albedo enhancement or cloud reflectivity enhancement. They don't want to use the term geoengineering any longer because people are waking up to that term. It seems that the effort to try to deceive and confuse the population as to what's going on in the skies above their heads continues and the, the whole of academia is helping to hide what can only be described as crimes against humanity, crimes against nature, not just ecocide or genocide, but omnicide, the destruction of all life on earth. And that's literally what's happening from these programs. Whatever the intent, the result is the same.
And for us on the ground, it amounts to biological warfare as well. We know we are breathing what they are spraying. And the fact that they don't point that out should be alarming to a population that is being exposed to what they're spraying.